the brick spiral staircase. Uh, let's take a slow walk down towards the basement and then once we're done that we will um, just have a look back on how it all started, how we set it out and how we built this. Um, it was good fun. We really did enjoy this. It was a bit of a task when we first looked at the drawing and uh, we obviously just had a little think about it. Preparation is always the key and then we just went ahead and started. So again, this is uh, down in the basement now. So let's have a look how we started this. So obviously we started off by putting ply on the ground and uh, obviously using the drawer and finding our striking points uh, from the center, as you can see. And we struck a line round that the outside, the whole sheet supply there, and then just cut them out. And you see one standing up on the left hand side there. And then with uh, laser level, we pinpointed where they were going to fix to the ceiling and we fit them up. And here we see uh, the brickwork starting to go round. And then we dropped, you can see the first line being dropped down. Um, so they were plumb and they went down straight to where um, we'd set out the ground. Then everywhere, obviously, being in the basement was tanked, so everything was blacked over. And then once that was done, we were um, ready to start doing the brickwork. And then just using uh, the inside of the template that was on the ceiling, we cut two uh, radius boards. So I had one and Harley had one. And we did a little bit of block work where we knew that there was no chance of any um, brickwork being seen because that was all going to get hidden in the, the first flight of steps when we actually came around to doing that. So you see all the plumb lines in place, so we followed them um, by using the radius boards as well, just to keep everything um, nice and to the right size. Um, and uh, to keep level, obviously we couldn't um, use a, a level on this uh, successfully, so you can see here we had the laser level, and that was perfect for this job. Um, just putting the laser up um, one course at a time and we just followed round and we did one side at a time but obviously the um, uh, gauge mark or the gauge rod was um, fixed on that centre pier and the laser you can see there just moved up with the gauge marks that we had on there and so it didn't matter which side we did and there is the laser level superb for this job and you can see here the first scaffold tube going in. Uh, we worked that out to land and height. There's the second one going in. And you'll see in one or two slides ahead that um, that was the same height, as I said earlier, of the, the first flight or first landing. And here you see Harley just demonstrating um, how we're using that line, or the laser line, just to uh, keep our bricks level. And um, again, you can just see the gauge marks on there and you see the laser level just on the process of being put to the right height. So uh, again, that um, rod in the middle there was gauged right to finished floor um, on ground level at the top. And here we have the very, very tight piece of size cuts um, radius bricks on um, each end of the centre pier and uh, obviously as we did that we had to then start thinking and doing the internal block work for each step so again when the centre pier was um, starting to raise up we had to incorporate um, those uh, other walls on them on the steps so uh, we could tie that all in you can see all the block work's going up first, and you see that as the block work all merges, they're all having to be cut and sliced. Uh, and again, all with ties in just to keep it all together. But uh, again, it was all really interesting to do, and 
anything that's interesting is always going to be good fun and uh, we certainly did enjoy doing this and um, you can sometimes see when the photographs are close enough um, the pencil marks that we did uh, for the risers and the treads just to make sure that uh, where we're doing the back and block work um, it was all within uh, the right area so that we could get face work on top of it and in front of it so once we got to that certain height we then had a chance to start doing that and we followed uh, another drawing that we did here just so we could see um, well have a better understanding of what we were doing and again the laser was used on every single brick here so even on the like the center pier we kept everything so uh, every course was completely level all the way around and that included obviously the risers as, as we were doing them as well and you see we put um, some sterling board over the um, treads as well to act as temporary treads because we knew that people were going to use this for access uh, once we got to the top um, but later on they were all gonna as you'll see at the end uh, they all had um, uh, York stone treads put on in the end but these just served as protection really of the brickwork that we did and also just to provide a temporary access for everybody else who uh, needs to get upstairs once these were done. Uh, there's a centre pair, um, freshly laid, uh, still ready to be or waiting to be jointed up. And you see those um, radius headers uh, all cut individually on the site. So quite a tedious job uh, there, but and then you see the recess joint that was done throughout. And again, you see the first flight is now coming up to the first landing. Just uh, one or two shots just showing it from different angles. And here we have the right hand side reveal of the opening. And you can see that these bricks had to be cut as well because they were still on the radius um, when they came to that point. So um, we knew at this stage that the arch that went ahead um, on top of that was going to be um, interesting <laughs> and it certainly was I'll talk about that in a minute but you can see uh, both reveals uh, now getting up a little bit higher and here are the lintels for the landing the first landing uh, these were then topped with a steel plate and, and then a thin layer of concrete and then the york stone so that really sturdy landings and uh, steps as well and as you can see that we said earlier that those um, scaffold tubes were put into the same height to enable us to um, just board that out completely and this is brickwork going up on the second flight and obviously this time we didn't have block work we had to indent where the steps were going to go and you'll see that the way we did this was to put lintels across you can see my favorite little um tool for doing a recess joint and again you can just see the lines um keeping us plumb and there's our gauge rod again just keeping everything uh, level with the laser level going all the way around and you can see plumb lines there uh, even on the reveal for the um, for the opening so everything was oh I have to say here we put bits of tape on as well where the um, treads were coming and then you see the brickwork getting to um, full height or virtually full height and um, because obviously it was only a temporary floor above us um, to allow people to work but then ultimately all those joists that you see above Harley there had to come out for the stairs to obviously uh, get up to ground level. You can see all the um, other treads um, cut out and laid over our scaffold boards there and we used them um, for plumbing up off so we could get each lintel or step 
in exactly the right place. And again, using the laser, the laser level, everything was put in exactly the right height. And again, these had face work, uh, well, brickwork, I should say, to start off with, and then a plate drawn across. And then they were um, done in a similar fashion to what the Landon was done with a thin layer of concrete and then Yorkstone. So again, you can see we have there the fifth um, step um, sort of going in. And as we're sort of coming around there, you can see uh, there was these little diamond recesses. The, the original idea was to have lights in those um, just to give it a bit of an effect um, as you walked up the stairs. But this um, um, was decided um, not to be a great idea. And you can see how awkward some of the cuts were on the radius and uh, where the lintels uh, both met. Because we're still a little bit unsure on how the um, finish was going to be on the underside of um, these the second flight. Um, so we just wanted to make sure that we cut everything to the concrete. Um, so that would sort of allow for anything to be done under, on the underside. And now we come to the lintel, sorry, um, the arch. Now this, as we said before, was still, the spring and points were still on the radius. It was only the center part that went um, straight again. So normally on, if you've seen the, the drawing uh, lessons I've done, uh, when you set out a free centered arch, everything's done nice and geometrically so that the two um, tight radiuses blend in with the main radius. Um, this didn't. This um, had to follow the line of the ceiling that was already put in previously in the corridor and it was not geometrically good for brickwork. So um, really had to bend and twist and uh, do some awkward little cutting um, on those spring and points coming on to the main part of the arch. Uh, very, very um, awkward. Probably the most difficult arch I've ever done. Um, so again, I wasn't overly happy with that. And as I'm looking at this now, I'm cringing a little bit. But again, it was so tricky to do, especially being, let's like say, on a radius and not set out for brickwork. Very difficult. Um, but we did the best we could. Um, we had tram line reinforcement over the bed joints of the arch again, as we always do. There you see the steel plates on top of the second flight, um, all ready to have a little bit more brickwork put on them, and then filled in with concrete, and then the York stone put on top of that. So uh, you can see there the wine rack's not done at the bottom yet either in the corridor. And then when we came back up to ground level, um, we had to finish off up to the window frame. Um, a little bit unsure what to do. The original idea was to use uh, the York stone as well, but um, the client um, walked past one day and stood and looked over uh, when Harley and I were working there. And they just said, I think Heronburn would look nice in there. And I think that was definitely the right thing to do. Um, so the vision of um, uh, the owner, uh, just to come up with that, because we hadn't thought of it, and uh, we think that that really did finish this off. So um, yeah, really pleased with that as well. And you see just uh, the awkward little cuts going in and tapped in with a light mallet. And there we see that the heron bone is all complete and the brickwork was just about complete at this stage and then after this uh, couple of shots we will um, take another walk but this time we'll walk down and uh, you'll see the the wine rack at the bottom this time because again it's a, a walk round when this was all light finished well, the other way around then, we'll see the wine rack first. <laughs> and then we'll have a little walk up. Now 
this was really um, good fun to do. A lot of setting out, and um, again, if any carpenters are watching, you know how crucial it is to get all the treads um, at the right height, all the risers at the right height. So this was great fun.